this is the center of Stockholm and this is where I go to work every day. I have a co-working space here which is for free which is really nice when you're an entrepreneur. So let's go there and check it out. So where we are right now is the back room of this co-working space and I hope that I can find some peace and quiet here so I can share with you guys the three main mistakes that I have made in my first year as an entrepreneur. So you don't have to make those mistakes as well. The first mistake is dreaming too big too soon. When I started out my business I had so many ideas of what I wanted to do. There were so many things that I wanted to accomplish and I had a very hard time focusing on putting just one foot in front of the other. To be honest, at the beginning I had a lot of ideas floating around in my head. There were so many things that I wanted to accomplish through this company. So I had a very hard time narrowing all of this down and developing this laser focus that is needed to actually succeed in anything. Because if you try to accomplish everything right away, you certainly won't accomplish anything. As you start out as an entrepreneur, you probably have very limited resources. So that makes it so important that you know exactly what you want to use those resources for. I, for example, am a sole entrepreneur, which means I don't have any co-founders, don't have any investors yet. There's really not a lot of resources that I can use. So that makes it all the more important that I focus all of these resources on the one thing that I want to get done first. I honestly gotta say that I wasted so much time in the past year just because I was distracted too easily. I would do something and before even finishing it, I would change my mind and say, okay, actually I need to prioritize something else and then I would do that for a while before getting distracted again, moving on to a third thing. And that left me with nothing to show for after half a year. So I would say that it is crucial that you have a list of all the tasks that need to get done, but then also prioritize them and stick to that ranking. This will help you to tackle the most important issues first, which will help you to generate leverage for your company, meaning revenue, and you can then use that leverage to tackle the more complicated issues further down the road. And that brings us directly to mistake number two that you need to avoid as an entrepreneur, which is not focusing on revenue right away. I know we live in a time where a lot of companies don't focus on revenue right from the start. They want to gain users first. They want to increase the interaction that the users have with your service. They want to build their audience. They want to build their social media channel. And I certainly fell into that trap as well. I was trying to build a platform for personal development topics. So at the beginning, I focused on building that platform, which took a lot of time. And after I was done with that, I focused on gaining users for that platform. But nobody knew about my service, so I had to build a social media presence. So I focused a lot on producing YouTube content so I could grow my channel there. And then the idea was that I take those users and I sort of mitigate them towards my site so I have my first initial users. Well, needless to say, that took a lot of time and energy from me. And I can guarantee you that after a few months of not generating any income, you do get a little bit nervous as a company founder. The fewer savings that you have left, the less room you actually have to operate your company and make any progress. So even though we live in a time where it seems kind of cool to start a company and just burn money at the beginning, just like Twitter did, for example, for years, I still don't think that this is the right way to go for like the regular small entrepreneur that just wants to get his startup off the ground. I believe it is much more practical to focus on generating income right away. That should be a top priority in whatever you do because it gives you that freedom to operate your company in the way that you seem fit and it will help you generate the leverage that you need in order to grow your company 
and maybe eventually hire people even. And of course, it saves you a lot of sleepless nights. Never forget that the purpose of any company is to generate revenue and actually make a profit. This is what your main goal as an entrepreneur is. So you should treat it like that. And the third mistake that I made that you should definitely avoid is that you don't know exactly where your strengths lie. Being a sole entrepreneur is especially hard because you have no one on your team who could do the things for you that you are not particularly good at. So as you start out, you have to do finance, you have to do accounting, you have to deal with all the legal bullshit, you have to do marketing, you have to create the product, you have to do sales. All of that is in your department. And believe me when I tell you that this can be incredibly hard. I mean, I studied business for five years and for me it was really tough. I don't even know how people handle that kind of stuff when they haven't studied business before. And what I realized is that I spent so much time doing things that I was not particularly good at, simply because these things take so much longer for me. On top of that, these were usually the tasks that I liked the least, so I was not even motivated to do them, which slowed down the progress even further. Just to give you another example here to illustrate, I was starting this platform about personal development. And I felt like I was very qualified for that because I had studied personal development for years, I had practiced it myself, so I was super excited to do that. But what I had failed to take into consideration was that I was not a programmer. So I had no idea how to build a complex platform like that. This eventually led to me spending months and months on programming, on web design, on all these technical issues that I had to deal with and that I was simply not very competent in. If I had taken a moment at the beginning and just reflected on whether or not I felt competent enough to build such a complicated website, I probably would have discovered that this is not actually what I wanted to do. I did want to work with personal development, but probably this was not the right way to go about it. Maybe I should focus on becoming a personal coach. Maybe I should focus on producing more content, as I do right now. Maybe I should focus on creating a community around me. These were all things that I'm actually good at, and these are all things that I have the most passion for. So I got a bit distracted by this crazy idea that I'm gonna be the next Mark Zuckerberg or whatever, instead of focusing on what I'm actually great at and then doubling down on that. So these were the three mistakes that I made over the course of my first year of running my own company. I'd be really happy if this video helps you to avoid those mistakes, even though it probably won't help you to avoid all the mistakes. And I think that's okay. I mean, that's how we learn, that's how we improve, that's how we evolve. We have to make our own mistakes, learn from them, correct them, and then maybe pass on our knowledge to future generations of entrepreneurs. I, for one, am super excited to see what other lessons are yet for me to learn on this journey of being an entrepreneur. It is a constant struggle, and sometimes you just feel exhausted and overwhelmed but at the same time, I can't think of any job that is as rewarding and that has such a steep learning curve as being an entrepreneur. So with that being said, I hope you go out there and you crush it. Yeah.